Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God, is the revelator once again. And you're hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We are coming from two unique presentations where I addressed the children of darkness as I was exposing the upcoming evil generation in the kids' ministry, which was the fifth segment of the fifth week, the presentation that marks the week five in the kids' ministry dimension. And we also moved further with the adults and the overall listeners, the brethren, the followers, the sympathizers, the disciples, the partners. And we entered into yet another dimension where I preached about the devil's intimidation and hoping those that listen to those sermons, you received the word without any challenge or contradiction. And today we continue. And today I want to explain the callings of God, or you can call them the callings of the Holy Spirit, or the callings of Jesus, to me it's just the same. But it will be good if we define them as the callings of God. For God the Father is the ultimate name that is above every name. So, in the callings of God, let us get into scripture so that we may understand how the callings of God function. For the callings of God are without repentance. Have you heard of that scripture which says for the callings of God are without repentance? I don't know if ever you have heard of that scripture which is in Romans chapter 11 verse 29. It shows that callings do not begin with the repentance. And if callings don't begin with the repentance, they begin in the world, not in the church. Why? Because every time when you start talking about callings, there are people that have made themselves believe that the callings of God are spiritual gifts. Callings are not spiritual gifts, but a calling is a conviction, something that you are convinced to do by God, something that you are convinced to do by God, and something you are given as an assignment to do right here on earth. So whenever we talk about the callings of God, you must not only rush to start thinking about the prophets evangelists, workers, and administrators of the temple. That is not what shapes the abilities of God. It begins in the world. We have pilots, we have doctors, we have nurses, we have lawyers, we have economists, we have engineers. All those are the callings of God. We have teachers. And I'll give you an example so that you understand how you can recognize if one is truly called in the area that they are serving God. All those people are serving God. In their respective callings that they were given by God, in the specific areas of influence and inspiration, for the callings of God are without repentance. And most of those areas, they don't even need you to know the name of Jesus. They don't even need you to receive the Holy Spirit. One starts to function in that area as an engineer. And for you to know that this person is actually truly called to become a teacher, you see it by the way that he puts 
his or her focus, his or her time, the passion, the desire, and the driven ambition, the desire that is behind, the enthusiasm, uh, the highly classified potential that is inside someone when he's doing or she's doing whatever she's doing. There are teachers that you can actually tell that he or she is teaching just for the sake of getting a salary. There are nurses that are rough in hospitals. You think you think this nurse is bitter? Why is she is at work? You think she's angry? She doesn't even smile. Do you know why? She forced herself into a calling that she was not called. If you hear about those soldiers that go around beating up people for nothing, it's not their calling. If you are a soldier, you have been called to protect, not to harass people. So when you hear about soldiers that beat up people or soldiers that end up shooting people, and they start lying that they were given a command or an order, even the ones that gave them an order, they were not called to be soldiers. If you are truly called to become a soldier, you will not harass people, you will not kill your own people, you will protect your own people, you will protect your own territory. Those police officers that survive on bribes, they are not called to, be, to become police officers. Don't tell me about the economy of the nation. I'm soon going to prove to you so that you understand that the calling of God is a very deep, mysterious thing. Where if one is serving in the area that he is called, he, he is given a certain grace that is unusual, that makes him or a different from the way that others behave. I hope someone is understanding what I'm saying here. It's just the same with a police officer that is on a, on a roadblock who survives on bribes and lets go people with, without licenses. He or she is just the same with a preacher that is standing on the pulpit who is after money. All those people, they are not called. You can't claim to be called as a preacher and you are on the pulpit of God for money. No, you are not called. I'm now inside the church building. And I explained to you that for the callings and the gifts, of God are without repentance. I'm now the pulpit where many can function in the spiritual things of God before repentance and they prophesy not for God but for money and they heal the sick not for God but for money and they do miracles not for God but for fame. All those, they are not callings of God. Yet they can be callings of God, but without repentance. But I'm yet to give you the callings of God. Yet I'm giving you the callings of God without repentance. So that you may know that God has called many, but he chosen a few. Those that are called as many, they are not chosen. This is why they can be called even in the wrong areas or in the accurate areas or in their specific areas. Let's go to the book of Mark chapter 3, verse 31. And hear the ultimate calling that ever marked this earth as the highest calling and Jesus is preaching the highest calling that you, I ever know about 
that worked here on earth, that functioned here on earth. And Jesus is preaching. And then there came one of the brethren and standing in front of Jesus. And he was sent to call Jesus. And the scriptures actually say, there came then his brother and his mother standing without and sent unto him, calling him. What it means is that they were calling Jesus, while Jesus is already called by his father. They were calling Jesus to come outside the church building, outside the temple, outside this platform where he was preaching. And they were calling Jesus, why this is already called. Meaning they were saying, leave whatever you are doing so that you can come outside. And the multitude set up right round about him and they said unto him, Behold, your mother and your brethren seek you outside. And he answered them and said, Who is my mother? Who is my brother? And he looked at them which he was teaching the word and said, Behold, my mother and my brother, my mother and my brethren, pointing to, those, to the ones that he was teaching the word. And then he says, For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother, and the same is my sister, and the same is my mother. What Jesus is simply trying to say is, I will not go anyway where I have not been called. I know what God called me to do. I know that my mother saw an angel before I was born. But she did not call me. God called me. There are people that claim your calling because they called you. There are people that claim your calling because they were sent to call you. And at this particular moment, Mary is not even Jesus' mentor. This one can only be mentored by God. So here we are talking about the calling of God. Which Mary believes that she can come whilst Jesus is fulfilling the calling that he was given by God. And Mary believes that he can, she can call Jesus out of the temple to leave whatever she's doing. That's what my mother also used to believe. But I thank God she, she is now learning to believe that I'm truly called by God. Luke chapter 7 verse 19. And John calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus. And the reason why John called his two disciples and sent them to Jesus was for John to get clarity about the calling of Jesus. And remember, this John has been called by Jesus earlier to be the forerunner of Jesus. So this is a calling seeking clarity from another calling. And which calling? The same calling which called John. It is calling. And John sends two of his disciples to go and seek clarity from Jesus. Should we wait for another? Or we should just be hopeful for he that is coming? Art thou he that should come or we should look for another? That is the message that John sends with his two disciples to seek clarity from Jesus. When the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto you to ask, are you the one that should come? Are you the one that has come? Or we should look for another. Why did John send his disciples to ask such a thing from Jesus? John understands that if you are called, 
by God in the things of the spirit, there are certain standards that are supposed to be demonstrated. That includes the demonstration of power. And Jesus knows that at this point of time, for me to prove that I'm actually the Jesus that you, John, have been preaching about, and now I have come, this is an area that I must not prove with words only. And this is the area that has confused many preachers. They want to prove that they are called by debating online. No. They want to prove that they are called by scrutinizing other preachers. No. They want to prove that they are called by debating theology, theologically. Theology, your knowledge in scripture, your study of scriptures does not define a calling. And the disciples of John have been sent to John to seek clarity. Are you the one that has come or we should wait for the other? Are you the one that has come or we should wait for another? And the only way that Jesus can answer this type of question to prove that he is actually called is that Jesus should demonstrate the power. I don't believe in, a, in any calling that doesn't demonstrate power. I personally, as the revelator, I don't believe in a preacher that comes with the theories. Why? Because the politicians are also good at theories. The lawyers are also good at fake theories. The House of Parliament is busy making noise with the theories. So we need someone that moves in a certain dimension of power when it comes to the callings of God. At that very same hour when Jesus was asked that question, he started curing many of their infirmities and plagues and delivered many of their evil spirits and unto many that were given sight that were blind that very day. And then after he finished demonstrating those miracles, signs and wonders, then Jesus answered unto them and said, Go your way and tell John what you have seen and heard, how the blind see, how the lame walk, how the lepers are cleansed, how the deaf hear, how the dead are raised, and how the poor have received the gospel. Not how the poor have been financed, no. He was not a prosperity preacher. He speaks about it. Go and tell John how the poor are given the gospel in church. Meaning that the poor need the gospel. So in short, what Jesus did there was he demonstrated the power. Instead of simply giving the disciples of John a response, in a bid to convince John through his disciples that he, he was actually called for the specific office or the specific influence that he, John had been advertising as a forerunner for Jesus. And when the messengers of John had departed, Jesus began to speak to the people concerning John. Wanting to understand if these people surely understood this type of calling that John had. A calling that had the capacity to question the calling of Jesus. And then Jesus says, what went ye out into the wilderness to see? What did you people go out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind. What really did you go out to see, you people? A man clothed in soft raiment? No. Behold, they which are gorgeously presented and apparelled well, they live deliciously, they live presentable in kings, courts or palaces. He's talking about the preachers that are wearing the Gucci suits, the preachers that are looking classy. Those are not callings. Those are money makers. Those are business people. 
Why is Jesus giving other examples that are insignificant about those that live in king's courts, those that are dressed, presentable, in trying to explain the calling of John? And then he says, but what, what went he out to see? A prophet. Is that what you think? Yea, I say unto you, more than a prophet. When he says more than a prophet, he's now explaining the calling of God that was upon John the Baptist after revealing his calling to John the Baptist. And he describes a level that is above a prophet. When I was six months old in my mother's arms, my mother used to report this story before she decided to keep quiet about it. My mother used to describe this story. She said when I was six months old, in her arms, there was a prophet that came and said, this child that you are killing, she will, he will not be a prophet. That's what he said. He said he will be greater than the prophets. He will lead the prophets. He will, be, he will not be a prophet. And years later today, I'm preaching the gospel unto you as the revelator. And if you don't know who the revelator is, the spirit that was upon John the Baptist was the spirit of Elijah. And who's Elijah? In one moment in a deliverance session, when I was asking Lucifer to simply kill me if he had an issue with me, when I was speaking to a manifestation of Lucifer, Lucifer said, says, how can I kill Elijah? And the same Lucifer was addressing me as John the Revelator. I'm defining the calling of God upon the one that is preaching right now. So who's Elijah? Elijah never died. And why didn't Elijah die? Because he's the one that later manifested in John the Revelator in whom Jesus says, if I want this one to remain alive, one spirit that was in john the baptist child of god i'm here once again to reintroduce the calling of god in the revelator i'm here also to convince you to convict you to realize to discover the calling of God that was given unto you. Some of you are called in the world. Don't despise that calling. You could be a hairdresser. I saw a hairdresser with the 93 million viewers. Is also earning through YouTube views. A hairdresser. I was shocked yesterday. I saw also a mechanic who was teaching mechanics, practical mechanics. Every field is a great person who's worth a billion. Even those callings that you despise, like teaching, because you are in a nation that is struggling economically. You could start an academy as a teacher. I remember revealing to someone a week ago and I said, do you know how much millions I'm seeing in your hands because of just farming? Everyone has got his own greatness. You could be a singer. But all of you, you need deliverance from the revelator. You need deliverance from Jesus. You need deliverance from God. You need direction from the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus.